Steph, congratulations on the new contract. This must be a very proud moment for you and your family. Yeah, massively. Um, I think to be able to be at this football club and this will be my 10th year is pretty special. And um, for my family as well, this has been my home for 10 years now and absolutely love everything about the club, the people that's here. And um, yeah, it's my club and to sign another year is, um, yeah, I'm actually buzzing. I was going to mention the 10 years that this deal will see you reach a decade at the club. Was that always an ambition of yours or, or something you've had your eye on in recent years, maybe? Um, I think initially when I first signed for Manchester City, I kind of wanted to be as, here as long as I possibly could and to, pl to play at that top level and to be competing. And um, I never really put a number on it in terms of 10 years or 10 seasons. But I think when you get a little bit closer to the 10 mark, it's like, OK, a decade at this unbelievable club, it's... You kind of want to reach that and I feel really good in myself, in my body and I'm really enjoying my football so it kind of become a really easy decision to be honest. During the conversations with the club about this new contract, was there anything specific that made you commit or, or were you always wanting this to happen? I always wanted it to, be ha to happen and obviously um, I know where I am in my career in terms of my age and my experience so for me, it was more clarity about my role in terms of on and off the pitch. And I feel as though I've got a lot to give in terms of my experience, my leadership to bring the young players through. And I mean, in terms of do I want to stay 100 percent? Yes, there was no real kind of any doubt about that at all. I wanted to be here for as long as possible. And I always said to myself, if I was enjoying it and I was happy, then why would I not? So for me, I'm just absolutely buzzing to be standing here, sitting here and just talking about the fact that I'm signing another year. Tell us about the influence of the manager, Gareth Taylor, kind of um, how much has him being here and, and his, his management style uh, influenced your decision to stay? Yeah, of course, I think me and Gaz have worked together for over three years now and for me he's developed me as a centre-half in ways that I didn't think that I could progress and I think in terms of my learning about the game and the way that we play, we love having the ball at our feet as centre-halves and that brings out the best of me in terms of control and possession. He's really pushed me on my leadership skills in terms of in games and away from the pitch and I think especially over the last four or five months I've been playing the best football that I've ever played in my career so I think in terms of confidence and allowing us to get my rhythm and to get that control back, it really has brought out the best in us and hopefully there's still more to come. Fantastic. So by the sounds of what you're saying, it feels like you still feel like you're developing and learning even at this stage of your career. Yeah, I think um, I think people when they say they get a little bit older and then towards the end of the career, it's like, OK, you just want to kind of go through the motions. But I'm not like that. I want to learn as much as I possibly can. I want to keep developing and I still think I can do that. And I think I'm in the right place. I've got the right people and right staff around us as well as teammates who have been absolutely amazing this season they've been really supportive and they really give us a lot of confidence to be who we want to be and for me that's the most important thing because if I can get that right then when it comes to the pitch I can keep developing and, and learning along the way. This is a young squad it's developing all the time how exciting is it for you to be kind of the the leader of that on, on the pitch? Yeah it's a massive honour first and foremost I think to be captain of this club it's Kind of, I pinch myself every day that I've had that opportunity to do it for so long and it's not just me, there's other leaders within the team but like you said we, we have got a young squad and I said at the end of the season, the last, uh, last game of the season, we didn't really achieve what we wanted to this season but I feel as though we have good people, we have people that want to work hard, they want to play for Manchester City and help us get back to where we need to be and that's competing for trophies and Champions League so for me, I'm so excited. I know it's the end of the season now, but um, I'm looking forward to the next season already. Does having a young squad in some ways put even more emphasis on your leadership and your experience? You know what? The group's really, really receptive and I think that's, that makes it easier for me. And I think it's not like I consciously think about doing certain things. But yeah, we do have young players and we have had setbacks this year. But I think for us, it's been important that we bounce back straight away and... I've been really surprised on our reaction on that and it's been really positive and when we have done well and we've played big games like the likes of Arsenal and Chelsea at home, we've celebrated them wins because we've worked so hard to get that. So for me, obviously, I take it on naturally in terms of that leadership, but these young players want to learn and for me, that just enthuse, like it just enthuses me to, to kind of be myself and to help them along the way and if I can give them one little bit of advice... Um, as they go in their, on their careers, then that's kind of my job done. 
it feels from the outside like this is the best kind of dressing room and, and atmosphere. Well, would you share that sentiment and, and why do you think that is? I think in terms of um, dressing rooms, I've been a part of a lot of good dressing rooms, especially here at City. We had some really good players and really good people, but for some reason this year, we've just clicked straight away. I think um, nobody puts themselves first before the team. I think whenever we have had them setbacks, there's no pointing the finger, there's no blaming. I think it's kind of like our ethic is just to get back on the training pitch and learn that way and to really put ourselves out there and kind of help your mate as well, which it becomes a good environment when that happens, when you can come into train every day, you're looking forward to seeing the girls, the girls are buzzing, there's energy around the place and you know that everybody's there for each other. So I think I think Bunny might have said it in her interview in terms of the, the team spirit and the togetherness, it is clear to see and hopefully that can continue and get stronger for next season. So with that team spirit and with the talent uh, that we've got, I mean, what do you think we can achieve next season and beyond? I think for us as a team, I think it's important that we start better than we have done in previous seasons. I think it's been a trait that we've had and we need to get rid of that. And I feel as though if we can hit the ground running um, and pick up extra points at the beginning of the season, we don't have so much to do towards the end because especially at home, our form's frightening and there's nobody coming here to come and to beat us because we play our best football here. and. And it might be us reflecting on what we do maybe when we go away and instead of losing the game, it might be getting a draw and getting more points on the ball. But for me, we've got so many talented players who have now learned another year under the way that Gaz wants us to play and how this club likes to play. And that for me is a benefit that the group is staying the same and we kind of can learn off each other and we're on, we've got them relationships already instead of trying to create new ones all the time. If you watch the women's team play, it's very similar style to, to the men, to the under-21s, to the under-18s. There's kind of a, a feeling that runs right through this club. If you were asked to describe that style and, and what it means, what are our principles, how, how, how would you describe the City way? I think we are structured, but in a way that we are controlled and people are allowed to do what they want to do with the ball. And I think we are mainly a, a possession-based team um, who like to frustrate the opponents by keeping the ball and tiring them um, and defensively I think everybody wants to win their 1v1 battles and whether that's from starting from the front with Bunny, Chloe, Hempel, they are so aggressive in their pressure and that we can win the ball high up on the pitch but for me I love playing the way that we do and I love watching when the first team play the EDS I mean I watch so much football of this club and I think once you see them pictures and you see how much we've done the training pitch and it comes off, um, it's so satisfying. So for me, I, I just love the way that we play and um, I would say that we just like to control possession and also want to be in control when we haven't got the ball. Do you think that, that style that you've just described and how much you love it, do you think for young players that, that must be something that's quite attractive to them, do you think? Yeah, because everybody wants the ball at the feet and I think that's, that's most important. I mean, I watch a lot of the young girls and the young boys in the academy and how they play and in terms of their technical level and their, the standard that they have already at such a young age, it's going to be frightening what they're going to be like when they're coming towards 18, 19, 20 and um, for me, the way that Man City play as a, as a men's team, I think you look, look at the likes of Haaland, De Bruyne, Grealish and all these young girls and boys want to be like them and they want to play like them so and there's no perfect way to do that than the way that we play here. What are your personal ambitions over the next 12 months? Are you setting yourself any targets or, or are you just going to enjoy this? No, I think for me personally, I mean I'm competitive so I want us to be competing on all fronts in terms of trophies and I want to play a big part in that and I'm realistic to know that I'm not potentially going to play every single game, but them games that I do, I want to keep my place. I want to fight for my shirt. And I feel as though I've done that over the last four or five months in terms of the big games. And I've proved myself that I can play at this level. So, and most importantly, to enjoy it. Um, you obviously, in your career, you have ups and downs. And maybe the last couple of years with injuries and a few little setbacks, you kind of then forget why you actually play football. So for me, I just want to come in every day to train and give it absolutely everything for this football club and for my teammates and kind of let my football take care of itself. Brilliant. And finally, 
our fans are going to obviously be delighted with this news. Do you have a message for, for those who, who turn up every week and, and show such great support? You know what, our fans are absolutely amazing. I think, um, obviously, got a relationship with them for over the last 10 years and um, it's the best feeling when they sing your name um, in the stands and it gives you so much confidence. But I think their dedication and their their noise that they make every single game for us is is really helped us this season and hopefully they can do the, the same next season for us. Well, Steph, we're all delighted with the news. Congratulations and good luck for next season. Thank you.